A week ago, an umbrella and camera cover were standard operating equipment for our Friday Football Blitz staff. Tonight, it's a water bottle and air conditioning in the car. Also a big change from recent history. East in a first place showdown in the Big A. That's right. Pergolders at their new slash old home. Bree Stevens for a second straight week hosting Middleton in a first place battle. Cardinals get on the board in the first running back. Cam Molly takes the pitch, finishes the drive, running it in for the TD and it's 7-zip. Cardinals continue to control the action. Quarterback Brennan Schmidt throws a perfect strike from 17 yards out to Sam Lawstein for the score. It's the second of the game, but the Pergolders finally getting some traction in the second quarter. Deontay Shad connects with receiver Kenny Jones, putting East deficit, cutting the deficit to just eight. However, Middleton wins by the final of 42-21. Lancer fans and cheerleaders getting an early workout doing some push-ups following the game's first TD against West. But the Lancers up 7-zip on the ensuing kickoff. The region's Terrence McNeil Jr. takes the short kick, and he gone. Talk about turning on the Jets. Down the sideline, takes it to the house 7-6. West defense brings the heat. Kavion James Ragland on the carry gets rocked by a trio of Regents, knocking his headgear clean off. Lancers offense, though, would recover. Late second quarter drive capped by Elias Soba with the short TD run. The follow-up by six at the half on the way to a 19-7 win. More from the Big 8. Sun Prairie hosting Memorial. Pick it up in the third quarter. Cardinals down by 8. Marcus punches it. Delaney punches it in. Caps off a 72-yard drive. Two-point conversion, no good. Later in the quarter, Memorial's Terrell Godwin stripped by Nathan Coy. Coy going the other way for the 36-yard score. Sun Prairie on top. But in the fourth, the Spartans' Emmett Enright scrambling on fourth down. Finds Adam Smith Jr. for the touchdown. Memorial goes on and hands Sun Prairie a 28-18 loss. Also in the Big 8, Verona, a 34-27 win at Janesville Craig. Well, in one of the few matchups in the area between teams that are still unbeaten, Pecatonica Argyle seeks a repeat performance of sorts. Ryan Wing has the highlights in our Blitz Big Game. Rob, two years ago, Blackhawk brought home the gold trophy as the Division 7 state champions. Last year, they advanced to Level 3, but they were shut out by Pecatonica Argyle in the regular season. Both teams enter tonight's Six River Showdown with 2-0 records. Which team will come away with the W? Warriors looking to run a little trickery, but it backfires. Joe Quint can't handle Jason Trueheart's pitch. Will Herman pounces on it for the Vikings. Facing a fourth and short on their next drive, the Blackhawks' defense returns the favor. They stuff QB Logan Green on the keeper for the turnover on downs. First play of the second quarter, Vikings in the red zone. Cameron Trueheart stumbles inside the five, able to keep his balance and get into the end zone from 13 yards out. Extra point was no good. Late in the first half, Peck Argyle ran the two-minute drill to perfection. Again, it's Trueheart, this time from four yards out. They took a 14-point lead in the half, but crazy things happened in this one. A power outage at McKellar Park. That meant a long delay. They haven't even resumed play yet. Peck Argyle leads 22-8 to eight midway through the third quarter. To the Badgers south we go now. Edgewood gunning for their first win of 2015. First quarter, the Crusaders driving. QB Jack Dunn calls his own number. He dashes 29 yards into the end zone for the 7-0 lead. Ensuing kickoff, the Red Hawks give it right back. Nick Cad hits. The ball pops loose. Edgewood recovers. They are back in business after converting a fourth down just short of the goal line. The home team punches it in on a fresh set of downs. Fred Richardson. Plows in with the pile for the touchdown and the 15-point lead. But Milton rallies with 24 straight. They beat Edgewood 24-14. Elsewhere in the Badger South, a pair of unbeatens as well. Squared off Oregon. Or I'm from Oregon. Apologize. Oregon. I knew I'd screw that up. They beat Monona Grove for the first time in six years. Panthers 21-0 over the Silver Eagles. Handing the six-time defending South champs of Badger Conference their loss on the season. Thank you, Ryan. As for the Badger North... It has been an interesting past 24 hours for the students at DeForest. Tonight, a Norskis team coming off a loss on the field faces a big challenge on the road with the events of what's been going on back home in their heads. DeForest at Reedsburg. Beautiful evening for football or anything else for that matter. First quarter, Norskis Connor Drew launches a bomb down the sideline. Jaden Sackman snags it inbounds, but that drive would fizzle out. Game still scoreless in the second quarter. Beavers' Jack Yeager fakes the option up the middle, turns on the boosters. He does get chased down at the two-yard line on a 65-yard scamper. No matter, Yeager punches it in on the next play. Initially called the touchdown, called off, but he scores on the same play on the redo. So DeForest rallies, though, for a 26-20 win. Undefeated Wanakee taking on Sock Prairie in the Badger North. Third quarter, Warriors up big in the red zone again. 
Javion Dane powers in for the three yard score. Wanakee up 35 3. Eagles trying to get something going. Austin Powell takes the snap, makes a couple of moves, and Powell takes off down the far sideline. Suck finally gets into the end zone. Hey, it's the first TD Wanakee's given up this season. But the Warriors, as they usually do, respond. Nate Carter connects with Hans Hepner for the score. Wanakee wins 42 to 10. Portage riding a 20-game losing streak, visiting Baraboo, where something's got to give. All Warriors in this one, 29-9 Portage in the second quarter. In where we start, tip drill. Ben Bolt reels this one down the sidelines. Warriors would punch it in two plays later. 36-9 Portage on top. Just before the half, Baraboo driving fourth down. J.J. Watt, no. That's Jacob Kensoltz with the tackle for loss. Turnover on downs. Portage goes on to win. 50 to 36. Badger crossover matchup as both Mon Horb and Fort Atkinson one and one. Vikings threatened to increase their lead early in the third, but Cole Nelson able to take down Matt Blom short of the sticks. That forces the turnover on downs. Blackhawks deep in their own territory. This won't help. They can't handle the snap. Bryce Arneson recovers from Mon Horb. Two plays after that. Bloom won't be denied. This time he goes in on a second effort, getting him across the plane for the score. And Mount Horeb takes the final here, 37 to 14. Where can you find a matchup between a Puma and a Vanguard? Or a program that's been a power and one that's fighting to field a full team? Actually, all in the same place tonight. And our Marissa Silvis joins us now with those highlights. Hey, Rob, entering tonight, every team in the Capital North Conference was undefeated, including Poinette. The Pumas had a pair of nail-biting one-point victories in the first two weeks, and tonight they hosted Capital South's Wisconsin Heights. The Poinette band there, of course, pumping up the crowd. Scoreless in the first quarter, Ryan Hutchinson pitches it off to Tanner Kerr. Kerr jumps over a defender and gets into the end zone. Pumas up, 7-zip. But the Vanguard's driving late in the first. Tyler Parman gets the ball punched out by Jacob Burke, and Tanner sees right there to recover it for Poinette. So first play of the second quarter, Pumas Kerr gets the handoff, and he does the rest. 43 yards to the house. Poinette wins big 44-6 the final. In a non-conference matchup, Waterloo hosted Wisconsin Dells. The Dells looking for their first win. Scoreless in the second, Wyatt Gallitz calls his own number and takes it in from a yard out. A two-point conversion makes it 8-0 Pirates on top. Later, Gallitz goes to the air, but off the deflection, William Clatch picks it off for the Dells. Then on third down, Dominic Morse slips and falls, but he gets up and airs it out to Mason Webster and watch him go 64 yards to pay dirt. That ties it at eight all and Waterloo wins this one 44 to 28. One more note from the Capital North, Lakeside Lutheran improves to 3-0 with a 52 to 6 win over Mostyn. Rob? Thank you very much, Marissa. That's it for the Blitz, but there's much more to come this night for you in sports. If the Badgers want to roll with the tide tomorrow night, well, they'll likely need to turn back the clock to the days of not so long ago, a preview of the season opener when we return.